we have a brand new jelly gouache to try out today. This one was £10. So actually, it's the cheapest one yet. Even though we recently reviewed the honeycomb ones, which were quite cheap. These ones are the cheapest. They don't come with their own brushes like the other one does. And they're a slightly less like pretty looking design, but it's still kind of satisfying with these see-through bottoms. Uh, let's just open it up. That's really like cheapy plastic lid. Apparently you can use this as a palette. But I don't think I will. I don't know. We'll see. It just seems a bit me. Uh, a little bit of plastic foam, which doesn't really put my mind at ease about how airtight this is. It does feel pretty airtight though when you put it on. And it's easy to close, which is different to the other ones. I always struggle with the other latches on these boxes, like these type of latches. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that. I'm like always like, oh. So let's get to opening up these colors. You get 12 in a set and only one white and also a black. So let's get to opening them. Okay, there we go. There is a little bit of oil on the top. I don't know if you can see that, but that is an indicator to me that these are a little bit more watery than maybe the other ones, but we need to try them before we decide. And the reason that I kept the lids is that I'm gonna swatch these. A wise person once said, use the lids as a swatcher instead of throwing them out. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> right, could be fun, actually. Yeah, so they are quite oily from, because when you use them out of the pot, they will, will mix up, obviously. So they'll mix a bit more than just what is fresh on the lid, but this is a good indicator of like colors rather than texture. I don't know if you can see that, just a little bit of excess oil. So once we mix them up, it won't be that bad, but we need to see. These are my swatches, by the way, guys. Did you know that I hate doing swatches? You can probably tell by the way that I'm doing this. But it's more fun this way. <laughs> also, I never use the colours, like, straight out of the pot without, like, mixing them. So, to me, it just... I don't see the point of swatching, but... I've had a bit of excess paint on these packages, so let's throw them out after we've used them. So, those are the colours. Looking pretty vivid. Quite nice, need to mix them before we use them, obviously, like I've been saying, but they do look really vivid and nice. And uh, let's check them out. Let's try them out. So I started out by just painting a thin layer of gouache over the background just so when I paint on top of this it will kind of shine through and give a vibe and this colour should kind of shine through all the cracks between what I'm drawing and then just have like a nice colour and hue to it and give like a feeling of what I'm trying to convey like the emotion and stuff but yeah, I just had fun with this one. It's like a cute little image of a cat, um, in case you couldn't tell what that outline is, inside a convenience store or a shopping a shopping store. I don't know what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, I think it's really good. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. And I was just thinking about what makes a painting successful necessarily. And I don't know if this is like a perfect painting or it is obviously far beyond perfect but I enjoyed doing it and I'm starting to realize that I am definitely getting better at what I do which is really good I'm trying to see how I define success and maybe like redefine it for myself because I feel like when we think about success the goalpost always moves so when you achieve something, it's like, actually, I kind of want that now. And it just keeps going and I should start being proud of my accomplishments so far. And I think that's something maybe artists or people who do artistic pursuits, such as like maybe acting or even writing or singing or dancing, we all have this probably self-harsh criticism of like I can do better and just constantly striving for better because I think it's something it's a talent that you can work on so we get in our heads about constantly striving for perfection I guess 
and the goalpost just moves. So if we achieve something, we're like, now I need to achieve the next thing. And it's just like a consistent thing in our lives. And I think we need to recognize more what we've already achieved. I just wanted to speak on that a little bit because if you don't know about me, I am a graphic designer in my you know normal day-to-day -day job and I do YouTube and TikTok and stuff like that as a bit of a hobby and it has given me over the years some financial reward, um, reward of having an audience as well and just reward of me being able to explore my own abilities and write stories such as the comics that I've done in case you don't know I've written horror comics and I sell prints and stuff like that so you know it kind of depends what you think is success um I know when I first started YouTube when I got to like 100 subscribers I was like this is amazing and it just I think that's when the vibe of I need to do better <laughs> started to infiltrate my brain I guess and I'm just always very harsh on myself I think we all are well maybe not all of us some, some of us have super confidence and yeah anyway <laughs> I just wanted to talk a little bit about this and what I do as a career and how I got into my career whilst we do a long kind of paint with me video because I think maybe if you're painting or something you can paint along with me whilst I discuss this and paint my little cat and convenience store shop. So I started out my art career when I did my GCSEs which is a um, exam in the UK if you don't know probably for when you're about 15, 16 years old and I didn't do very well in those exams and I was really disappointed because I thought I'm not good at anything really I was good at swimming um but nothing else I was good at painting I was good at art I enjoyed it it was one of those subjects where I didn't feel overwhelmingly rubbish at it and uh, I didn't do very well in my exams and I thought that that was it like okay well what am I good at I keep failing and I keep not doing as well as expected anyway um but I went ahead and I did an A level in art anyway and I really enjoyed the first year of that A level is like the next exam after it so it's kind of the exams you take before you go to university and it's the exams that you need to get into university so I did A level and the first year I did really well, I was really concentrating on just producing a high volume of work, just painting every single day, just that's all I did basically. And I think I definitely got burnt out and then the next year happened and I just didn't feel it as much. And I remember even my art teacher pulled me aside, he was like, what's going on? Like you, you produced so much work before and I just, I guess I wasn't really feeling it anymore. Um, just to produce work for the sake of it instead of actually connecting or enjoying what I was doing and I think that's probably what happened I felt a little bit burnt out but anyway I did well enough um, in my A-levels to then apply for university and where I came from it's a small city basically and didn't really have the options to explore different classes like animation or illustration things like that that probably you might have had access to or maybe not um, but when I found out you could do a, a course in animation, I was like, that's amazing. I want to do that. That sounds so exciting and something I want to do because I love telling stories. I love characters. I love creating characters. Um, I love drawing characters. I love the idea of making stories about worlds and building worlds and doing design and stuff like that and I was like this is incredible this is what I want to do I love animation I love anime <laughs> you know I love all all the films and I thought yeah I want to do that little did I know that I would apply and I just wouldn't have what I needed to get in so I didn't really have any like um life drawing um stuff like that which was a big thing for them to have in my portfolio 
and it was really difficult because I just didn't have the opportunities to have experienced life drawing or do anything like that when I was younger so I just didn't learn about it to be honest so I didn't get into the university I wanted to I got rejected and this was like another failure for me this was another point of my life where I was like hmm do I really want to do this do I really like where is this going am I going to spend all this time doing something and then not be able to pursue it luckily I was still in this stage of just I want to go I want to do this I want to do art and that somehow pushed me through and I applied to do a foundation course which was just a year-long course of um, different classes basically the first term you have a dabble in all loads of different stuff so you do like a week of photography a week of illustration a week of animation a week of fine arts and a week of graphic design and I really enjoyed graphic design but I wanted to do animation I was like dead set on it so I did the week after you do all the weeks um, you decide what you're gonna do for the rest of the year so I decided animation and it wasn't really an animation course <laughs> but it set you up to make your portfolio to try and get into university the university you wanted to do the course you wanted so because you basically you've done this foundation course where they set you up with the perfect portfolio to apply to this course that you want to this university you want and you were almost guaranteed to get in um, unless you incredibly messed it up so <laughs> I worked really hard and I was so nervous um, but I did get in in the end, so I like persisted my way into this university basically and got onto this animation course. Really good, really fun, brilliant. When I first started, realised it was quite difficult. It wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. And I still loved it. I just found it so difficult. 2D animation hand drawn um, taking photos of every frame and then putting it all together in a film afterwards and realizing your mistakes and going back and correcting all the drawings 24 drawings in one second and it was just really difficult and not really what I thought it would be and there was a lot of pressure um, during that time because everybody wanted a job in animation so you're kind of competing with your peers and your friends within the university which was a really weird um attitude to have I still loved going to university and I still learned a lot and I still had time to like work on my projects and I still made like friends for life basically and I wouldn't ever take any of it back because I do really appreciate that experience but university for me didn't teach me the lessons I thought it was going to teach me it did teach me lessons but not the ones that I thought I was going in to learn so animation I thought I was going to come out knowing how to draw um, a film like Spirited Away or you know um, it was really difficult and it was a time where traditional animation was kind of being phased out as well it was more CG animation and I wish you could choose between the CG course or the 2D course but I just loved hand-drawn stuff so I went for hand-drawn so it was a really difficult time and then after that I decided to do a masters in animation but I lent more towards art of stuff because I realized that I didn't like doing animation as much as I liked the idea of it. So I did sort of the art side of it and I did comics and I did a graphic novel and everything sort of just clicked for me. It was like oh yeah I like writing, I like storytelling and I love drawing and I love doing characters I just don't like the animation part of it so it just all made sense to me suddenly I wanted to do a graphic novel so I did like a sci-fi mystery graphic novel and I was so proud of myself because I did that whole year of doing that um for my masters and it went really well but then after that because I was in Cardiff at the time studying after that I was trying to get a job in something it was really difficult because Basically all my family were in Gibraltar so I went back to Gibraltar and instead of pursuing comics and things like that I had to pursue a career in graphic design. It's sort of what I fell into because there are a lot of um, companies out there that did it. But I don't regret it because I learned a lot and I really 
felt for the first time in my life like financially stable once I got a job doing graphic design and it was also a career related to something I wanted to do like it's an art career and I don't think skills when you do art everyone always thinks you can go and do this skill or that skill I don't think they're all transferable but I learned a lot about graphic design from this job and now um, about eight years later I'm still a graphic designer now I work for King which is a company who do Candy Crush and things like that and I get to do a lot of illustration work as well as graphic design and I couldn't be happier I'm really happy in this job I also did YouTube this for um, probably about four years now and I also in that time was able to write and do a few horror comics and to have some success in that sense that people actually bought it and read it and enjoyed it and I think that in itself is a success the fact that now despite all these failings or despite the insecurity of where I was going to be in the future I have a job in art that pays really well that treats me well and I get to do YouTube I have a fairly big audience I would say who I like and I enjoy sharing stuff with um YouTube does not does not pay enough to cover my bills or anything it's basically a hobby for me it does everyone thinks I probably earn a lot of money from this I don't at all not at all I probably cover enough to cover the cost of my water bill a month something like that um it obviously depends on how popular the videos are or whatever but yeah so that's a little bit about my story and how I define success and I was just thinking like now I'm always thinking oh, I should do better I want to do this next I want to get better at illustration I want to get better at painting I want to get better at making YouTube videos whatever and then I think about that young girl who didn't do very well in her GCSEs or wasn't sure what she wanted to do with her life and and I just want to be like it's going to be okay I want to just tell her just do what you love follow the inspiration and enjoy it and you'll be all right and I wish I could go back and say that and I guess why I'm telling you this is because if you're in that position now where you don't know what to do you don't really know if art's for you just follow what you love doing and the rest should follow all it takes is time really and it doesn't really matter if it's financial reward that you want, if it's recognition, if it's your own personal success, your own personal goalposts. None of that should matter as long as you're doing something that you enjoy doing. And I feel like if you really do enjoy doing it and you keep going, then success is bound to follow. And I hope that helps you in some way, that message. And... Um, just know it's not easy I know it's not easy I'm still finding it not easy I think everyone does so I just want you to know that everyone's in the same position and you can do it <laughs> um, I hope that that message helped you and a little story I guess I just wanted to do a, a, a sort of longish paint with me video and I hope that you liked it so I'm just gonna be quiet now whilst we finish it, the drawing and I will see you at the end of the video
the final painting i hope that you guys enjoyed this jelly gouache video and let me know this is the cheapest one that we found so far so i think it's pretty good it is a little bit watery and maybe it dries a little bit duller but that could be me that could be my <laughs> application but i really i think they're really good and they hold up pretty nice considering they're 10 pounds so hope you guys enjoyed this video and please give me a thumbs up if you did and i hope to see you next time bye